I'm an instructor of English and Literature at Florida Gulf Coast University. And the advice, uh, I write question number three, and my advice would be that appearance matters. Nobody's looking for perfect cursive writing, but if you make your writing look nice and neat, it'll put your reader in a good mood, and you really want your reader to be in a good mood. Thank you and good luck. Hi, I'm Chris Prince from Atlanta. Uh, well, I read question one this year, and my advice is to never neglect to address the why. Good luck. My name is Alicia Becker. I teach AP Lang in a Southern California school at Los Jesus. And my advice has to do with rhetorical analysis. Question two. So the most important thing is always, always tie back to the audience. What the question you need to answer is so what? So say that you, for instance, say, oh, the author uses lots of examples of powerful women. Well, so what? Tie it back to uh, the audience. Maybe those women are inspirational for the audience. There's got to be a reason why. So answer the question, so what? Because without it, then you don't really have analysis. Good luck. Well, hello, Robert. Uh, I am Dr. Christina Hinkston, and I teach at Prince George's Community College in Maryland. This year, I was not only a sample selector for the AP reading here in Tampa, Florida, 2018, but I was also one of the um, head persons to work with question two, the rhetorical analysis. My one piece of advice, I can't talk, my one piece of advice for you students is this. When you read, read everything and read it carefully. Think, allow yourself to do some critical thinking before you start answering your question. And then answer exactly what is asked of you. Give some thought to what your teacher has taught you during the year, and then write. Take your time. Read, think critically, then write. Revise if you have the time, but move on. You have only 40 minutes. Best wishes. My name is Desiree Balubi. I'm chair of the Department of English and Foreign Languages at Norfolk State University. And I read question three, which is about the value of exploring uh, the unknown. If I had a piece of advice to give students, what I would say, once you get a prompt, you want to make sure that you really understand the prompt. And when you understand the prompt, don't waste time beating about the bush go straight to the point and don't spend time talking about things that are not I mean not related to the topic if you want to def uh, give some definition you want to create a contest create that contest but we want something concrete give examples personal experience something you read in a book or something cultural it could be political provided that serve the purpose of demonstrating or proving or making a case but we really love anecdotes but you want the anecdote to be related strictly related to the topic and if you if you write keep writing keep writing it's not the number of pages it's how many examples and how well developed and how concrete it is that's what we're looking for and I uh, wish you the very best. Good luck. Hi, AP students. I'm Brenda. I'm from Georgia. I've st scored the AP exam for longer than most of you have been alive. No, let's just be plain here. Longer than you've been alive. Anyway, um, this year I've done all the questions. My best bit of advice is that there has been a shift and we're looking at the choices the writer makes in order to create their position. Do not get too hung up on ethos, pathos, logos, diction, or certainly not commas and dashes. Enjoy your writing. I am Dr. Elizabeth Otterwright, also Liz Wright. I'm at the professor of English Linguistics and Writing Studies at the University of Minnesota Duluth and I'm the chief reader here at the AP English Language Exam. So I've been asked to give you one piece of advice and that is that when you write anything, absolutely anything, there are three things that you should think about. Number one, what is your purpose? You need to have a reason for writing it, a very clear purpose. Number two, who is your audience? You need to be thinking about
about your audience, what their relationship is to that purpose, how they feel about you, how they feel about the purpose, do they like the purpose, do they not like the purpose, how do they feel about that. And number three, think about the genre. Are you doing this in an email? Are you doing this in a letter? Are you doing this in a video like I'm doing right now? You need to think about what medium it is that is being used because there are certain rules for each one of the mediums. So when you have a teacher who tells you that there are certain rules and then a different teacher tells you there are different rules, it's not that one is right and one is wrong. It's you have different audiences and different purposes and different genres rather. And so you need to think about those. That's how you learn the rules. And as you get more and more experience, you learn about more and more genres and what the rules are for all of those genres. So the three things that will make you a successful writer in any context are to think about number one, your purpose, number two, your audience, and number three, your genre. So good luck and enjoy. Uh, I'm Mary Traxel. I am a professor in the Department of Rhetoric at the University of Iowa, and I read the argument question. And the one piece of advice I would give to exam writers is do not overlook the power of the personal example. And don't just touch on it, really develop it, really tell the story that supports the claim that you're making in response to the question. Thank you. Hello, I'm Larry Hale. I'm from Wanakee, Wisconsin, which is right near Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I did question number one, which is the synthesis essay about eminent domain. Here's my advice to you. You need to drive the bus. Your argument needs to be front and center. The quotes are secondary. I don't really care. I, I, I want to hear a little bit of the quote, but I want to hear your voice and your argument throughout the entire essay. Good luck. All right, my name is Joe Housie, and I teach at Bladensburg High School in Bladensburg, Maryland, which is in Prince George's County, right outside of DC. I scored question number one, and the best piece of advice is to actually make sure that your voice is heard. Don't use the sources to make your argument. Use your voice and have the sources support your argument. So my name is Cindy Stevens, and I teach in Wiesbaden, Department of Defense School, Germany, and don't start your essay with something that everybody in your class is starting their essay with, which could be picture yourself or imagine yourself, all three essays, 10 people in the class, the reader picks up on that right away. Hi, my name is Matthew Hanna. I'm an assistant professor at Purdue University. And my piece of advice for the argument question would be two pieces. One, start reading about current events before you take the test so you have something to talk about that's contemporary. And two, whenever you use an example, make sure to explain it in the reference to the question. I'm Peter Dernan. I'm a high school teacher from New Hampshire. And I graded with former chief reader, Mary Traxel. Her advice, she, she wants to change the synthesis question by adding the rule that quotations have to be four words or fewer. Think about that. Hey guys, I am Professor Michelle Robinson. I am the Director of Comprehensive Writing at Spelman College. Um, and if I had to give you one piece of advice about writing, um, I would say be really true to your voice. Um, when we're at AP scoring, we are reading in excess of a million exams, um, and the ones that clearly stand out to us, they have all the particular trappings of a good essay, right? They're organized, they're developed, um, but the one thing that helps things stand out from other essays is that when students are true to their own voice and that we, we are able to see the uniqueness of who you are that comes through in your writing. So that would be my advice. My name is Brad Dominey. I teach at Adamson High School in Dallas, Texas. And my biggest uh, bit of advice for you on question number three is to make sure that there's a reason why you move from one piece of evidence to the next. Okay, don't just jump from Columbus to ice cream. There's got to be a reason why you do this. Thank you. Uh, my name is Betsy Bray. I teach at the University of Waterloo in Southern Ontario. Um, I was on the argument essay this year, and I would say my best piece of advice is to consider your personal experiences as possible evidence, but that evidence only makes sense if you explain the significance of it in relation to the question. Um, make very direct links between your own experiences. <laughs>
Hi, my name is Erin McNellis. I'm the English Department Chair at Tarboot Fatora Community Day School in Irvine, California. I read question three, and my best advice to you is to think of yourself as supporting your answer with reasons, not examples. You can use examples in support of those reasons, um, and you should always explain how the examples, like after you give the example, explain how it um, supports your thesis, but organized by reasons, not just another example is another example is. Hi, I am uh, Dustin Hoffman from Winthrop University. I teach creative writing and literature and composition. And if uh, I give you one piece of advice, it would be to develop and to dig deeper. Even when you think that you've developed an idea, as long as you can, try to push it another sentence or two farther. All right. Hi, my name is Joseph Griffin. I'm a professor of rhetoric at Brigham Young University, Idaho, and my one piece of advice to you would be to know your audience. That's simple. Know your audience, know what they want, know what they're expecting, give it to them. Hello, apes. That's what I call my students anyways. My name is Pauline Moran, and I teach in Appleton, Wisconsin. And this year I scored the rhetorical analysis prompt. And my advice for you would be uh, focus on what seems most deliberate in the piece that you're analyzing. You don't have to comment on every little thing. Look at what seems most purposeful in the piece and talk about that in the, in the language that, that you know. You don't have to throw out those fancy terms. Hi, I'm Victoria Wilson and I teach at Elk Rapids High School in Elk Rapids, Michigan. My advice for the argument prompt is to try to develop some sort of thoughtful introduction and not just write one sentence that you think might be a thesis statement. Hi, I'm Annie Burridge. I teach at Foxcroft School in Virginia, and I'm reading the argument prompt, uh, question three this year. And my advice is, if you're thinking of using The Great Gatsby, don't. Hi, I'm Dawn hubble Stabley. I teach at Bowling Green State University in Ohio. And my best advice on the open-ended argument prompt is to write down like your first eight or ten ideas and then choose from the bottom of your list.